Hello everyone, it's Seiji and today I will be talking about The Gilded Wolves by Roshani Chokshi. The Gilded Wolves is the first book in the same named series and is set in Paris 1889. The year of the Exposition Universelle, also known as the Paris Exposition. It was there to showcase the advancements in the 19th century. In the world of the Gilded Wolves, there's something known as forging, an ancient power that allows people to forge amazing things. Think of tables that if you're not the owner, you will get trapped once touched, or beautiful poisonous flowers. Even mental images can be forged. There is this elite society known as the Order of Babel that has different houses all over the world. Two of the four houses in France have fallen, including the one our main character, Severine, is the heir to. In order to reclaim his rightful place at the head of his house, he enlists a crew consisting of a unique cast of characters. I really enjoyed this book and besides it being very entertaining, I felt that there was a lot of important commentary as well. The story in the first place is very intriguing. Also, Severine is a very smart and charismatic person and really serves as the glue that keeps the crew together. The story is written from the perspective of four of the five group members. Severine, Leila, an Indian dancer who is looking for a treasure, Enrique, a Spanish-Filipino historian who was banished from his home, and Sofia, a Jewish engineer who has difficulties interacting with people and communicating. So after every chapter, the point of view is changed, and I liked that a lot because I got to know everyone rather quickly, and I grew attached very fast. My favourite character was Sophia, I felt she was very relatable and I also liked the way she thought, it was very different from the rest. And this is going to sound a bit contradictory but I felt that their differences were actually the things that really connected them even more. Each character was either a misfit or completely rejected by their community. They somehow find one another and accept each other regardless. Having said that, I really liked the group's dynamic because all the relationships were rather unique. Every single person had a different relationship with each member. It's not like they're all equally good friends. Severine, of course, is the one that binds them together and every relationship has its own nuance. The world building was also very cool. Every now and then you would get snippets of how forging works. There were two kinds of forging affinities, mind and matter. Someone with a matter affinity could influence one of three material states, liquids, solids or gases. Both Tristan and Sophia had matter affinities. Sophia's forging affinity was for solid matter, mostly metals and crystals, and Tristan had an affinity for liquid matter, specifically the liquid present in plants. I felt that it was very original and believable, so that was a huge plus for me. Throughout most of the book, there was this sense of high stakes, so that was one of the things that really kept me reading. Like I mentioned previously, there was a lot of commentary in the book, and I don't think that that is very common in YA, so I appreciated that a lot. The crime of stolen art is often mentioned. For instance, there is this one passage in which Enrique has to salvage something for Severine. In the dark, he felt the presence of the Order's treasure like the eyes of the dead. Hate shivered through him. He couldn't bring himself to look at the looming salvaged piles. He might help Severine steal, but the greatest thief of all was the Order of Babel, for they stole more than just objects. They stole histories, swallowed cultures whole, smuggled evidence of illustrious antiquity onto large ships and spirited them into indifferent lands. What in my opinion perfectly describes the consequences of stealing art. Chokshi also shows the disgusting part of the Paris Exposition. Besides all the advancements, they also had zoos in which they would keep indigenous people so that rich people could look at them. It was to be the largest attraction after the Gallery of Machines and the Eiffel Tower. According to the newspapers, it contained a Negro village with almost 400 Africans in their natural habitat. That word struck Sophia as wrong. Habitat. It sounded like it was meant for animals. People were not animals. It didn't seem right that they were there solely to be seen. 
I looked into this deeper and I didn't realize how prevalent it was and how long it continued. I went to the Wikipedia site and I saw a poster of a zoo, an African zoo in Stuttgart in 1920. I read one of her interviews about the book and I just wanted to share this answer. Why did you choose to set the Gilded Walls in pre-World War I Paris? I think it was the name of the era that first interested me. It was called La Belle Époque, the beautiful years, and I love that. In my own fantastical imaginings of that time period, it was just cabaret and velvet and pyramids and champagne and courtesans swinging poles around their necks. But that is just the surface. It's very much a gilded beauty. And what I love about setting the story in 1889 is that was the year of the Exposition Universelle, or the World's Fair. And it was at that World's Fair that the European powers were trying to show off how good they were by bringing civilization to savage countries. They had an exhibit visited by 28 million people that was literally called a Negro village. And it was a human zoo. It's disturbing, right? They were putting people on display, treating them like animals and then saying, ah, but we, the colonial powers, have brought them religion and medicine and stories and just completely dismissing all that had been there before. It was something that really resonated with me because it's a very common theme. It happened in the United States in St. Louis for the 1904 World's Fair. They also had a human zoo. But this time it wasn't Africans, it was Filipinos who were native Igorot. It was all these things that came together, and seeing so much of my own history buried in the sidelines, that made me that much more interested in bringing it to life. More of these important type of topics were touched upon, such as racism and racial stereotyping. I also liked how much math and history the book contained. It had this sort of cool treasure hunt vibe and there were pictures as well so you could kind of like play along. So that made it very immersive for me. They talked about so many cool things like encryption, ancient Chinese compasses, mythology and whilst reading it I was just geeking out all the time. The group was split up and everyone had their own task, so it was quite hard for me to follow the plan. But other than that, I thoroughly enjoyed this book. Chokshi drew from a lot of different cultures and religions, and you could really see that she did a lot and a lot of research. So yes, in my opinion, this was a very good book and I can't wait to read the sequel. If you've read this book, let me know your thoughts. Either way, thank you very much for watching. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video.